Hey there, this is Jonathan with the Generate Press team and welcome back to our series on the query loop inside of Generate Blocks. In this video, we're gonna create a loop template that will automatically apply our query loop to whatever current template we're viewing. So for instance, in the back end of our posts here, you can see we have a bunch of different posts all with varying categories. So you'll recall in the previous video, we created a static query loop on the press releases page that brings in the press release category. With that though, of course, this was set directly on the query loop element itself. So if we browse to a different category, it's not going to automatically apply that template. And that's what we're going to do in this particular tutorial. We're going to use a generate press element to create a loop template that will apply that query loop automatically whenever we view other archives and categories. That all sounds pretty complicated, but it's actually not difficult. And we're gonna walk through it step-by-step step now. So the first thing I wanna do is come into the back end and go to appearance and elements. Now this is a generate press feature. And if you don't see this elements button, you need to go to generate press and have premium installed. Then under elements, we can create our own templates inside of here. There's a lot we can do with elements. And over the course of other videos in the future, we'll take a look at those. What we're gonna start off with is a new element here. We're gonna choose the element type of block. And this looks like the standard WordPress editor. We can do pretty much anything we want here, but what we're doing is actually creating a template that we can apply to various places on our site. So let's go ahead and call this archive template. And archive is the proper word in WordPress when referring to kind of like the index of all of your posts in a given location. Those are gonna show up on an archive. Let me go ahead and expand the document sidebar here so you can see what I'm doing. And what I'll do is just add in a generate blocks container. I'll stick in a little inner container. And then we actually don't need to rebuild that query loop from the ground up. So what I'll do is go to my press releases, the page we created in the last video. Then I'm gonna open my document sidebar so I can make sure I'm clicking the correct thing. And what I wanna do is choose query loop. I'll control C on my keyboard. And then I'll just stick in a little core paragraph and then control V on the keyboard. And it replaces that core paragraph with the query loop that we just copied. We're definitely making some good progress here already but we need to configure a couple of things. And before we do that, I wanna show you what's actually going to happen if I were to go to my post categories. And let's say I go to like my education category, for instance, you can see that there is a template that looks a little broken because of something unrelated I've done, but I want it to match that query loop that we just looked at previously. So if I scroll down, you can see it doesn't really fit that well. Same thing is true if we go to any other category. And so we're gonna go back to this template here. And what we wanna do is say inherit query from template. Now you'll notice that a lot of these options are going to go away. So previously on this query loop element, you'll recall that we set this taxonomy to pull in the category and then the term of press release. So we can either you know, go, go ahead and delete this. But what we're interested in is this button inherit query from template. And what that's gonna tell generate blocks to do is automatically pull in the posts on that template that we're currently viewing. So all of those parameters go away. And the way that this is dictated is if we scroll all the way down to the bottom here, we can see that there's this location section and this display rules area is where we're gonna tell this template where it should apply. So what we wanna do is scroll down to all archives here. Then what I need to do is switch to the element tab and we're gonna come down to the element type and we're just going to change this to loop template in this case. We can go ahead and publish this. And now what's gonna happen is if we scroll back up, just so you can see this formatting, we're gonna have two posts side by side all the way down for all posts in our currently viewed category, which in this case is just education. So let's refresh. And there is the template. Then again, I can do the same thing on history. And there we go. Now, of course, with this being a template, we can add anything we want inside of this. If you wanted to add some extra you know, information here, you could stick in a headline like you know, an H1, and then we could just type something like view more posts. And again, because this is a template, it's going to apply in both places here, right above this education and this history section. Now, one thing I want to point out is that when we're looking at this template, if we wanted to dictate how many posts show up per page, we can look and see we have two, four, six, seven posts here in our history category. So if we were to go back to posts and categories and look under history, we do have seven. And then in education, we have eight. So maybe let's say that you wanted to change that to be six posts per page. Well, what we can do is go to settings and reading. Then we could change blog posts to show at most to something like six. 
We'll go ahead and save this. And then now what we're gonna see is just six posts in this education. So two, four, and six. Now obviously we do have more posts, so we need to add in pagination here. What we can do is come back to our template. And then when we have the query loop selected, we can click this button right here that says add pagination. And this sticks in a series of elements here that we can customize to match our site. If you're using Generate Blocks Global Styles, you can attach those and you can customize these to fit exactly as you need. So we'll just update our template. And now at the bottom of the education template, we're gonna have the button. So when we click to page two, we can see there's the remainder of our posts in the education category. And then the same thing when we go to the history side, when we change to page two, we're just gonna have one post here. So again, just to clarify, when we're using the inherit query from template option on the query loop, the post per page is gonna come from our WordPress setting. And with that, we've created our first archive template or sometimes referred to as a loop template. This can be applied to multiple places across your site. Any kind of archive can inherit this template and you can also have multiple different loop templates depending on where you want them to show up. Maybe for some sidebar loop templates, you might want them to be stacked vertically. So just as we looked at in the previous video, you can change the width of the individual cards inside the query loop. So you have a lot of flexibility to achieve whatever it is that you need. If you have any questions, do please let us know. My name is Jonathan. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.